Happy hello, everyone. What if I said I could give you a pill that would make you happy? Would you try it? Most people say no, but that theoretical pill may already exist, and some people who say they're opposed to it may have already tried it. What? My name is Ryan Wingfield, and my job is to make people happy. After years of doing stand-up comedy, I've devoted an entire year to the study of happiness. Join me each week right here on a Road Comics Road to Happiness. Happiness is a fickle thing to define. For some people, it's a sense of well-being or living a meaningful life. But for some scientists, it is simply a neurological response to external stimuli which floods your brain with neurotransmitters that create a sense of well-being. It's like a poem written by a robot. Still, that kind of thinking is what likely spawned this popular cartoon meme, serotonin and dopamine, technically the only two things you enjoy. As we've discussed in this web series, serotonin and dopamine are the neurotransmitters that your brain produces, which creates a sense of well-being. It makes sense that if you could stimulate this neurochemistry with a drug, you could create a feeling of happiness, quite literally a happy pill. It turns out not only does this drug exist, but it was created over 100 years ago. So why haven't you heard of it? Well, odds are you have. Huh? The pharmaceutical company Merck invented the drug in 1914 as a catalyst for creating other chemicals. Eventually, it began being used for psychological healing. The drug is called methylene dioxymethamphetamine, also known as MDMA, but you probably know it by its street name, ecstasy. Before we go any further, I am not suggesting that you experiment with ecstasy. I myself have never tried it, nor have I felt inclined to. But maybe that's just because I'm high on life. <laughs> All joking aside though, there does seem to be evidence that MDMA has benefits other than a party drug. Essentially, it causes your brain to flood itself with dopamine and serotonin, creating feelings of empathy, giddiness, and talkativeness. In the 70s, it was even prescribed to patients of trauma. However, by the 1980s, it had turned into the party drug ecstasy, and in 1985 was outlawed in the United States, in part on the belief that it caused irreversible damage to the brain. Today, Today, the harmful effects are not believed to be as serious, and it is even being considered as a possible treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. That being said, let's face it, most of the people who are using it are dancing with glow sticks. Of course, any drug that is considered a party drug is bound to have side effects. People who take ecstasy often report short periods of depression after taking the drug as their brain rebuilds the neural transmitters that it used. As such, it is not a good long-term solution. Instead, the go-to happy pill today is SSRIs, which stand for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, more commonly called antidepressants. Rather than flood your brain with serotonin, as with ecstasy, these drugs cause the serotonin to slow down its absorption back into your body. While commonly prescribed to people with depression, there is evidence that it makes non-depressed people feel, quote, better than well. Yeah. However, the effects of these drugs do vary, and they do have their own side effects, so they too may not be a good long-term solution. Some scientists believe the future of happiness may rely in gene therapy. You may recall 50% of your happiness comes from your genetics. Some people who are depressed are just losers of the genetic lottery. But on the other end of the spectrum are people who are called hypothymic. These people are almost unexplainably happy, and scientists are trying to find out which of their genes are responsible. It will likely take some time, but eventually they may be able to develop treatment which will mimic those effects in other people and long-term happiness, at least 50%, can be achieved in pill form. But even if a long-term happiness pill existed, would you take it? A 2006 survey from England found that 72% of people are opposed to the idea of such a pill. One reason may be that a lot of people believe happiness should come from yourself, and Western cultures in particular believe it is something that should be earned. Much like an athlete who takes steroids to win, people who take a happiness pill seem to be cheating somehow. Plus, there is the fear of creating a society with no negative thoughts. Think of the Brave New World scenario. On the other hand, there is something to be said about being opposed to somebody being happy just because you don't like the way that they're doing it. I'm looking at you, every religion ever. Ooh. 
That's all for this edition of A Road Comics Road to Happiness. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave any happy comments below. Next week, happiness at the misfortune of others. The Germans call it schadenfreude. Here in the United States, we call it comedy and reality TV. Until then, stay happy.